in the garage uh, with a sketchy setup on the outlet over there. It's just temporary though, and so I'm taking as many precautions as I can, shielding uh, those alligator clips, and it's very low current. So I'm going to connect those um, real fast and then watch the meter power up. And then on the laptop here, I've just got the B200 set up and uh, the, the gain turned way down and I've got the box sealed and I'm not that far from my own meter. It's about um, probably 20 to 30 feet away and I'm not picking up any of those signals. So it means I've got a good seal on the box and I've got it grounded as well. Um, so we'll just come around the, the back side here. So I've got that cable running out over to uh, over to the wall there and connected to my 240 volt socket that I use for the welders. So we'll connect it up and see what happens. So what we're going to do here is prep one of these boards, actually the one that's inside of this meter right here, so that we can put it inside of the Faraday cage and listen to all of the signals it transmits while it tries to find a network. This one is from a different power provider than anything that's around here, so uh, in theory it shouldn't interfere with anything. But uh, to be on the safe side, even though it'll be in a Faraday cage, we need to, we need to quiet it down significantly. Uh, they transmit out quite a bit of power. Uh, you know, it's a very short burst of power, so they say, hey, it doesn't hurt you. That doesn't mean that it won't escape the Faraday cage. So what I've noticed with the Faraday cage is even though you would think that's supposed to be completely sealed, nothing gets in or out. Uh, the reality is if there's enough power, anything gets out. Um, and also if there's enough power around it, it can get in. So what we want to do is just turn the turn the volume down basically on, on its transmit power. And so how we're going to do that is this, um, this chip that's used here, this board is uh, broken into a few parts, um, and these two here are two different um, transmission uh, chipsets. This one's um, at 2.4 gigahertz, uh, like a Zigbee type of an interface, I believe, for a home area network. And this is the mesh network side of it. Put this one in. Close it up. And plug it in. Very carefully. So we live to do more experiments. This is the radio chip itself, a TI uh, CC1020. Um, and this is its antenna. You can see it a little clearer on this board that I've removed all the um, parts from. So this part here is the antenna that's for the 900 megahertz part. So on this board here, it's kind of underneath this sticker that's right there, but you can still see it. So the modem chip right here has some lines, um, you know, that we can trace out here. And so what I wanted to follow was the transmit path. And so the transmit path actually comes down here, uh, over, and into this chip. And this chip is this. It's a Skyworks power amplifier. And so this is its data sheet and they give you some layout recommendations and, and things like that. But there's a couple, um, a couple lines that are of interest. So the RF comes in here, which is that spot that we saw up top there. And then it comes out through all these combined pins, which you can see right here as well. These traces that come together, it's much easier to see on this board. You can see these traces here all come together and then the signal ends up running out here through a bunch of parts into the antenna right there. And so that power amplifier chip has some lines that control it and if we flip this over, these pins here, if they have a voltage applied to them up to three volts, uh, they'll basically provide the maximum amplification and if you set it to zero volts then it basically forces the stages into standby mode so what we're going to do is take these um, these pins right here 
these ones they have uh, conveniently uh, some vias there that go to some pads that go in let's see if you can see it there so it's these ones here so these two little vias come across and go into those lines right there so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut these right here and then I'm going to take these two pads, I'm going to solder a wire to it, I'm going to connect it to ground, zero volts, which will disable this trend, this uh, power amplifier chip. And then, since it's disabled, the energy that's coming out of this basically will be the, the full kind of antenna that this thing has left over. And then on top of that, we'll put this cage back on top. And so basically it'll transmit inside of this cage right here. So it'll kind of have its first level of Faraday cage. And then we'll put it in the big Faraday cage box for a second level of shielding. And I think that'll be enough to keep the transmit power so that it doesn't uh, leak out. If it still seems like the power is a little high, then what I'll do is just take the transmit line that comes out of here and connect it directly with a 50 ohm resistor to ground. Um, and I, I believe at that point that should just completely, you know, tone it down to the point where nothing escapes. It's running. I can see the numbers on the screen. But we're not getting anything. So either this one's dead or I killed it. Probably the latter. It's a pretty hardcore modification. Cutting it in the board. Maybe I've cut into a middle layer. I'm just going to slice the trace that's right there between the via and these pads. The pads are just right there on the trace so I'll slice them. I'll then solder a little wire to here. I'll find a spot that's connected to ground. I'll connect it, verify um, that it's connected and that it's fine and that'll just disable this uh, amplifier. Just put a little bit of solder on this wire here just to make sure it's tinned well. There we go. Okay, well, everything's connected. I don't know. It's still booting though. So if I cut into a middle layer. I would have shorted power and ground, so that's probably not the case. We got it connected to ground over here. It's connected to the two pads right there. So I'm just going to cut this, and now we've got our jumper. I'm just going to check again to make sure that nothing's connected on the other side. So now we've effectively disabled this little power amplifier. And if we ever want to just re-enable this thing again for some reason, I just take this whole stuff off, jump from those little vias across to those pads again, and then everything's back the uh, the way it was, and its power amplifier will work again. Hmm, what else could it be? Could it be it was just dead beforehand? Maybe. So we basically have just taken the path here, we've shut this guy off, so no more power amplification. So the antenna is effectively the power from this chip, it's transmit power into this line over to here and that is it. And then now we're slapping a lid on it so that it doesn't go anywhere, theoretically. And then we're gonna slap it inside of the whole other Faraday cage. So that it doesn't go anywhere. something though. Oh, there it is. So that is its meter ID. Okay, so like I said, here's the setup. It's getting dark outside. 
I'm going to try it a little bit more and then I'll disconnect it uh, for this evening and try analyzing the data a little bit, see, see what I see and see what the next experiment should be.